How do you know if you can use a digital stage box? What digital stage box can you use then? How do they differ from analog stage boxes? And why can't you plug any stage box into any mixer? Digital stage boxes pack inputs, outputs, converters, and preamps into one compact little box. And in return for this wonder, they can be a bit more challenging to set up and to understand. Don't worry because this is a full guide to digital stage boxes. We'll take a look at how they work compared to analog stage boxes, why you need to use specific digital stage boxes with specific mixers, and also how to use them in combination with analog stage boxes for a well-managed stage. If you're using Dante stage boxes, you might need my Dante setup guide, and so I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. Let's dive in. Okay, so first of all, why do we need stage boxes in general? Right. And it's because we often have a lot of inputs on the stage, microphones, etc. We have a bunch of outputs on the stage, speakers, monitors, in-ear monitors, that kind of thing. And our mixer is often at the back of the room. So we want to transfer all of the inputs and outputs from the stage to the mixer with as little hassle as possible. And a stage box just collects all of these inputs and outputs in one cable and moves them back and forth. How are analog stage boxes and digital stage boxes different then? An analog stage box is actually just a whole bunch of cables collected in one housing, right? If you connect into input one on the stage, then the exact same thing will come out of input one, or output one rather, at the mixer end. With the difference between a 12 channel and a 24 channel box is just a thicker cable with more and more wires inside it. So for every signal, you have to add another set of wires. More signals then equal more cables, more cables equals more weight, and more weight means more money and more time and effort to set up. So the reason that we might want a digital stage box then is that it is lightweight, more flexible, and easier and quicker to set up. But how are the two different then? So on an analog stage box, you have your inputs and your outputs, your XLR connections, right? And on a digital stage box, you have two types of connections that I like to call stage facing or mixer facing, right? And stage facing inputs and outputs are the XLRs. They look exactly the same as they do on the analog stage box. But then you'll notice there are several other connections, right? cat connections or maybe fiber connections. And these are what I call the mixer facing connections because this is where you connect a cable to connect it further to your digital mixer. What happens then is that instead of having multiple cables housed inside one larger cable, we have digital signals which are sent down one single cat cable or maybe a fiber cable. Similarly, the mixers are sent back to the stage on the exact same cable. But it's not just the outside that looks different, right? The inside functions differently as well. When you plug into a digital stage box, what happens is you're actually plugging into the microphone preamp. And then you gain up your microphone. The microphone signal is still at the stage box. And it is then sent to a digital converter, right? So we change the analog signal to a digital signal. And then we send it along this cat cable or this fiber cable or whatever, and it goes straight into the mixer, already a digital signal ready to be processed by our digital mixer. And we'll talk a little bit more about that process in a moment. The return channels are also sent back as digital audio, and they're converted from digital to analog audio, where we then connect our cables up at the stage box. So what can we connect to our digital stage box then? Well, that's easy. On our stage facing side, that is the XLR inputs and outputs, we connect exactly what we would connect to an analog stage box. That is microphones and DIs into the inputs and speakers and in-ear systems to the outputs. On the mixer facing inputs, these are usually cat cables or fiber cables, we connect to a digital mixer. Not just any digital mixer, but a digital mixer which is compatible with the stage box that we're using. But let's dig into why we can't just connect any digital stage box to any digital mixer. So we need to know a little bit about digital signals. So what happens to the microphone signal on the stage? We plug it into our stage box, we turn up the gain, and then we convert it into digital, right? Because the digital stage box here is an extension of the mixer itself. It's almost as if you plugged it straight into the mixer. As opposed to the analog one, it's just extending the microphone cable. It's the same thing as getting another XLR cable and just daisy chaining it along the way. So we've connected into our mixer. And this digitization turns into ones and zeros, which the mixer can then understand because it's a digital mixer, right? And you're thinking, but I've got a sick 12 channel alto 
analog mixer and I want to use a digital stage box because they sound lightweight and functional and cool. Unfortunately, you can't because your analog mixer does not understand ones and zeros. It only understands varying voltages, right? Analog signals. So if you were to send ones and zeros somehow into that mixer, it would just hear noise and there would be no musical content. So you say to me, okay, that's great, but I've just bought myself a QSC touch mix. That's a digital mixer, let's go. And then I say, ah, although it is a digital mixer, it doesn't actually have any digital input and output. It doesn't have the capability of adding an additional converter and preamp, a digital stage box, to the mixer itself. You cannot extend the mixer, you can only extend the mic cables. But on the back of it, it has an ethernet port. Yes, but that is for data, not audio. You can connect up to a router so you can control your mixer with an iPad, but you cannot send audio in and out of it. To send audio in and out of these data ports, we need to use a digital audio standard, right? And these are things that you might have heard of before, things like AES50, Dante, MADI, or GigaAce. These are different standards used by different mixers. And they're just languages that we use to translate audio into digital ones and zeros. So then you say to me, okay, got it. Got my eye on a nice Midas stage box to go with my Yamaha mixer. And then I say, they need to communicate with the same standard. Yamaha uses Dante, Midas uses AES50. Let me explain how that works. Digital audio is sent in packets. And imagine these packets have a postcode on them, a zip code, if you will. One standard uses letters and the other one uses numbers. So if you send a letter and you wrote the postcode as 1234 instead of ABCD, when it arrived at its destination, the sorting office would say, I have no idea what to do with this. Just like in real post, digital audio contains the data in a sort of packet and it needs to know how to route that data correctly. If you're using the wrong standard, it doesn't know how to route it, which equals no sound. And then you say, great, I've bought an Allen and Heath Dante stage box to use with my Yamaha mixer. And then I go, oh. I know I just said that Dante can speak to Dante and it can, but there's actually a little more in that envelope than just the audio data. Inside the envelope, inside the packets that are sent between the stage box and the mixer, there's also control data, right? What do I mean by control data? preamp gain, phantom power. The mixer needs to be able to tell the stage box to turn up the preamp or to turn on the phantom power. And sadly, even though Alan and Heath make Dante stage boxes and so do Yamaha, they both use different language to tell the stage box to adjust these parameters. So you would be able to get sound from the stage box to the mixer. You just wouldn't be able to turn the preamp up and down or turn the phantom on and off. So the ultimate takeaway here is that you must use a stage box which is compatible with your mixer. Your best bet for finding that out is to just go to the manufacturer's website or email their support or read the manual to find out what standard you need to use to communicate between your stage box and your mixer. A couple of bonus questions I've been asked are, can I bypass my Dante stage box and go straight into my computer? Same problem, you don't have control over the preamp or the phantom power. Do I need internet to control my digital stage box? You do not, it's part of a closed network. It's only connected to the mixer and it's being controlled by the mixer. How do we use these stage boxes? How do we use them together or independently? Do you need to use both analog and digital stage boxes at the same time? You can, but it's not necessary. Some larger format digital mixers have really limited inputs and outputs on the mixer itself. Think Midas Pro 2 consoles, Yamaha CL series consoles, Allen & Heath DLive consoles. All of these have a very small number of microphone ins and outs. And the idea with these mixers is that you have all of your inputs and outputs on the stage. So in that case, you need a digital stage box. In fact, with the Allen & Heath DLive consoles, the stage box is actually the mixer, and the mixer itself is just a control surface, but we won't get into that. But the opposite is also true. Some digital mixers, like the QSC Touch Mix, don't have any digital input and output for multi-channel audio. So in that case, you need to use an analog stage box. As we covered before, maybe you only have an analog mixer and there's no digital audio being used at all. In that case, you need to use an analog stage box. Of course, you don't need to use a stage box at all. You could just use 20 long XLR cables, but that sounds really tiresome, doesn't it? 
You can also find surfaceless mixers, little rack mounted mixers, maybe with a touch screen on them. They actually just live on the stage and you would control them remotely using an iPad. So in that case, there's no need to get a digital stage box because your digital stage box is the mixer and it's already on the stage. Though in that case, it's still wise to use an analog stage box to section out zones of your stage. I will use analog stage boxes for points in the stage. The drum kit always has a lot of channels, so why not have a dedicated stage box right next to the drum kit? That way I can keep all of my cables nice and neat. My vocals are always going to be at the front of the stage. So there goes another stage box for three, four, five vocals, plus any DIs for acoustic guitars or guitar simulators. One really big takeaway that you need to remember for digital stage boxes is that they can only transport digital audio over a certain distance. On cat cables, it's usually 100 meters. It's different on fiber cables or any kind of coaxial cable. You need to read the manual to find out what the limitation of your system is. Okay, let's look at a couple of case studies. These are venues that I work in regularly. So in our first example, we've got a Pro 2 mixer here, right? Digital Midas mixer, and it is connected by a couple of CAT6 lines to a DL251, which is a Midas digital stage box. It's using AES50 here. What we have then is we also have an analog stage box mounted on the other side of the stage. So there's always a stage box nearby to plug into. So this here is all of the preamps and it handles all of the conversion and sends the digital audio to the mixer. And it also sends all the mixes back to the speakers. We also have some other additional analog stage boxes that we deploy. A stage box in the front, it's quite a big stage. So if we've got our drums in the middle-ish over here, we might be closer to this stage box, but we can then use a little miniature stage box to move them over to this one and then get them back to the DL251. Another venue we've got here is a similar setup. So we've got our SQ5 mixer. It's connected with a CAT cable into a DX168 digital stage box that works with Allen and Heath mixers, but this only has 16 channels. What we have then is another CAT cable that comes out of this stage box and goes to the next one. So these are linked together in a chain. If we want to break out drums and vocals, we then use analog stage boxes to create these zones on the stage and get them to their respective channels on the stage box easily and clutter free. If you need to know how to route the audio once it gets into your mixer, I'll leave a couple of videos here about digital audio mixer routing. If this was useful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.